Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno, the founder of Roman Real Style. Today, we're going to be talking about how to select a quality necktie. All right, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. By doing that, these videos will come right to you. In addition, if you like this, if you find it useful, I would appreciate it if you would like it down below. I'm also going to link you to my free 47-page ebook, and we're also going to link you to a great article which, which will expand on this very video. Okay, how to select a quality necktie. This has actually become a lot harder because Many of us are buying neckties online and we see a wide range of prices. We see neckties selling for $10. We see neckties selling for $100. What's the difference? How can you choose a quality necktie? Because really what you want is a value. You want a good deal is what you want. And you want to be able to identify the best quality tie that you can afford. And I'm going to give you a few tips. We're going to get into some immediate things you can look at to make sure you get the right tie for you. And then we'll talk about the kind of slippier items, which it's harder to do online, but it's not impossible. And you can find a great deal out there. Okay. So the hardest thing and the one that we used to be able to do all the time is that you could walk into a store and you can pick up a necktie and you can feel it, you can hold it, you can stretch it a bit, you can see how it comes back on itself. You could feel the hand of the tie. You, you know, that, that's the term commonly referred to it. And you could put it up next to you. You could just get a feel of that tie, literally. Nowadays, much harder. And what you need to rely on instead is good photography, but also, you need to make sure you're dealing with a merchant that you trust, who has a good return policy, not that you think you're going to need it, but just in case. At the end of the day, though, you need to have a merchant who you trust, somebody who says this tie was handmade, and it was. Somebody who says it was made in England, and it was. Somebody who says that it uses a very high quality silk, that it's been hand woven, that it hasn't been you know, print, printed when it was built. And those are the things that you want to look for and expect to pay more. If you're spending $10 on a tie, you can pretty much be sure that this is a cheap tie. Nothing wrong with those type of ties if you're a man just starting out and it's a very classic conservative tie. It looks very good. It will get you through. I mean, if you're just graduated from college or you're in college, this may be the way to go. But ties are one of those things that if you can identify quality, you can oftentimes find some great deals out there. Okay, so getting back to quality, but before I get into the hand and I talk about some specific build details, let's talk about two things which you should be able to look on the specs and you want to make sure you get the right tie for you. Because if you're tall, if you're short, you want to be looking for a type of tie which is going to suit your body. So let's say you're under five foot six. You want to be looking at ties, and the average tie length is going to be approximately uh, 58 inches, 57, 58 inches. You preferably don't want anything bigger than that because once you start getting with a tie that's too large, not only is it going to be off, you know, in terms of length, but you're going to have to get really, you're going to try to have to find knots which are just going to work for it. And you just don't want to have an extra, I mean, there are ways around it. You could actually cut the end of the tie and have it, have it sewn off. You can also tuck it into the, you know, find places to tuck it into your pants or your shirt, but it's just an extra hassle and it's going to be better and look more proportional if you find a tie which is 57, 58 inches or smaller. Uh, a great resource is eBay and vintage ties. A lot of men don't even think about this, but older ties were made shorter. They were usually made a bit smaller. So if you can find a vintage tie, go into a thrift store, look at some of the older ties, look for the, the ones that are a bit shorter, lay them out. But if you can find something in the 55 inch to 56 inch range, it's going to probably serve you well. Another option is looking at ties in countries where shorter men are more predominant. So Japan, Italy, those places where the average height is more like five foot seven, five foot eight, five foot six versus the five foot nine to five foot ten that we see here in the United States, that's gonna be a great option as well. For the taller man. There are many tie places, uh, and in fact, I'll link you to one down below, uh, ties-necktie.com. My friend Hendrik Pohl runs this place, and they actually have an entire section for taller men, and you want to make sure to get a longer tie because otherwise, you're going to be having to get creative. If you have a 57-inch tie and you're six foot five, 
then you're going to find that when you go to tie that, it is just always going to be too short. And you're going to try to have, a lot of guys get around this because they end up tying very simple knots up here. I've got a half Windsor today. But a lot of gentlemen, they wouldn't be able to pull this off because it has an extra loop around there and it just takes away an inch. And it's something that they can't afford whenever they have a short tie for their body type. So look for longer ties. You're going to see these in the ranges of around probably 60, uh, what is it, 62, 64 inches. So quite a bit of extra room to play with and that goes a long way when you're trying to get the right knot and you want it to look proportional. Okay, so that's the first thing we talked about is make sure the tie is the right length. The other one is going to be make sure the tie is the right width. And when I'm talking about width, I'm going to use this, uh, use this tie right here as an example from Charles Alexander, another company I'm a proud supporter of. So Charles Alexander, this is one of his thinner ties. And it's hard to tell right here from the camera, but there's a little trick that I like to do. Uh, and by the way, you're looking for about three and a quarter inch, three and a half inches. That is perfect. That is average. Anything that goes closer to four inches or starts to fall below three inches is either a wide or a skinny tie. Wide ties kind of hark back to the 1970s and 1960s. I don't really recommend them unless you are a large man. If you're a thin man, then you could go for a thinner tie. Now, if you're also kind of chasing the, the, the winds of fashion, you could go with a thinner tie as well. But I think these thinner ties look better on thinner, smaller, petite men. But again, if you're going to have... Uh, so a couple things you want to match up. Let me go ahead and... So this is a $1 bill. You'll find these hopefully uh, throughout your wallet and maybe throughout... I know even uh, throughout the world, you guys... Uh, <laughs> Just a side story, but I know a lot of Ukrainians and Russians actually, uh, they don't put money in banks, they put money in dollars. And uh, side note, you can look it up. But an interesting note about the dollar bill is it's six inches in length. Not exactly, but close enough for these purposes. So fold it in half and you've got ex about three inches. So I can hold the dollar bill up and I can see right here that this is just under three inches. So I know that this is a skinny tie, a thin tie, probably not something I would wear, but for a smaller man, a more petite man, or a man who perhaps has a jacket with thin lapels. And that's another quick uh, little tip there is if you actually have a jacket with thin lapels, you'll probably want to match up the tie with the uh, lapels. So I can measure these right here and I can see that mine are just at about three inches. So. So I'd be safe still wearing this tie, but I'm not going to. Now here's a tie that I had made for me by a friend. And uh, this one is going to be a bit wider. And we can put this here and I can see, wow, this goes over quite a bit. This is closer to, uh, this is easily just under four inches, probably three and three quarters. This right here is on the edge of being a wide tie. And I will take one of Charles Alexander's ties. Uh, again, this one is the perfect length. This is about three and uh, three and a quarter, three and a half. Perfect, right there. I can see that this is a good width, and this is a, one of my favorite ties, actually. So let's talk about. We've talked about the width. We've talked about the length. Now let's talk about tie construction. Now, again. You can feel a tie, and, and just those ties I felt right there, there was a huge difference in the weight, in the build. I, I could just feel it. I could see it. But you're going to want to look at the details. So the easiest way, again, is to trust the merchant. But if you're dealing with someone you've never dealt with before, then you want to turn the tie over and look at all the details. Now, this pink one that I pulled off and I showed you earlier is not actually the highest quality tie. So I'm going to use this one as little things that I see that are missing. So one of them is going to be the, uh, the bar tack. So the bar tack usually is here on the back of the tie and it's a little bit, little stitch that you'll see that holds it together. This one is missing the bar tack because they just sewed it right down and that's a small indicator that it's not the highest quality tie. I turn this Charles Alexander over and we've got the stitch right here. So that's a nice little bar tack right there. Another thing on this tie is I can see it was made in England. And I don't mean to be a snob as to, you know, something made in some country is better. There's great stuff coming out of China. There's great stuff coming out of Japan. There's great stuff coming out of Italy. But usually Italy and the UK 
pretty much dominate it when it comes to high quality ties. You'll also find stuff coming out of the, you know, the New York garment district that's really good quality. And there are people that hand make ties in Minnesota and they're good quality. But rule of thumb, if you see it coming out of Italy, if you see it coming out of with a made in England stamp, it's a good sign of quality. So the other one is going to be the lining. And the lining is opening up the tie and looking inside and looking at the stitching, making sure, just, just getting a feel of how it's put together. This one, I can tell you, it's just elegant. You look at it, it's very clean. They've got a little bit of embroidery there for Charles Alexander, just very nice. I'm not gonna see that same level of quality on this lower quality tie. In fact, this one is really lightweight, really loose. Usually quality ties, uh, well, this isn't always an indicator of quality, but oftentimes a quality handmade tie will also be heavier and heavier build. This one's really lightweight. I can feel, I, I can actually hold it up to the light and I'm, almost see some of the folds over you know, I, Again, it, it's a fine tie, but it's not a high quality tie. And when I try to open this up and look at the lining, I can see that there is no lining, that it's just folded over on itself. All right, so at this point, the last quality detail that you wanna look for on the tie is going to be triple construction. Triple construction, you're gonna to have to flip the tie over and we're going to be going up the back of the tie and we're looking for a line which shows that basically ties are either made usually in two or three parts. If they're made in three parts, it's actually a higher quality tie because it shows that the tie maker paid attention and he wanted to have make sure that it fold because he knows that this area right here is going to be folded over and twisted up and so he wants to give it a little bit more give and the triple construction just usually creates a little bit better of a knot than the uh, the double construction. So as I'm going through, and I can tell this is triple construction because I see the lines right here. You'll see usually two of them right here. And then I've got lines going in the opposite direction right up here. All right, right up here going like this. So that right there is the last detail. There are a few others, and I know that there are probably some tie makers watching this and they're like, hey, you didn't point out this and this. Okay, this is a general overview, guys. But if you can look at those and if you can find those things, you can be rest assured that you've got a good quality tie. But at the end of the day, it's about trust. And I link you to a number, well, actually two merchants who I trust, who I've done business with for years, and I know their quality is good for the price that they're charging. One of them is going to be lower end. One of them is going to be higher end. Both of them, good quality ties, good value for what you get. All right, this has been Antonio Centeno with Real Men Real Style. I'll see you in the comments and in the next video. Bye-bye.